Hi, I'm Phil, and today I'm going to talk about my traffic signal projects. The first one is using an Arduino Uno computer. And the interesting part is that I'm going to use arrays to describe all the parameters of the traffic signal. And I'm not going to use any delays, but I'm going to schedule a timer uh, for each of the phases of the uh, traffic signal. So um, here it is on the desktop. On the top left, I'm pressing the pedestrian button and it schedules a, um, a crossing so that I get a green light. And the traffic signals here are pointing in the north direction. On the bottom, you can see the three sets of traffic lights, the pedestrian, which is the lower one, and the one that you can see in the middle is a, um, a set of signals for vehicles pointing in the north direction. And on the left, there's a set of signals pointing in the east direction. So I'm going to use a mind map to um, describe what um, I want to do. I'll look at the software. And in particular, I'll look at two projects and give you some of my references. So um, the objective is to uh, create an automatic traffic light system. And I can either use a button or a light sensor. So this project was inspired by the um, Korowa school. And um, it's task four in their year seven and eight STEM projects. So um, start with the green on when you press the button. And uh, when the sensor is activated, um, you can either use a, um, a push button or a light sensor to um, activate it. And then it changes to um, orange or yellow for two seconds, then uh, back, uh, then red then back to green again. So um, at um, Coralwell, they were given a couple of hints on what to do. And um, I want to comply with what um, their objectives are. But I also want to um, make my coding as efficient as possible. So I'm not going to use the delay function uh, because I think that wastes a bit of time. And it also allows me to do more things in the background. And I'm going to use an array to store all the signal parameters. The pedestrian push button is going to use an interrupt. And as a bonus, I'd like to uh, debounce the switch function. So um, just have a look at some traffic signals. They, um, the whole cycle goes from A to F. So on this diagram, you can see the movements of the traffic. So going north with uh, the phase A uh, goes north and it also allows the right-hand turn. Phase B uh, excludes the right-hand turn, but allows traffic um, going north and south. And we go right through the cycle by covering all the potential movements. So each of these are called phases. Uh, and I'm going to actually include the green to yellow as a phase, which is not the case in uh, real traffic signals, but it just makes the uh, software transitions a bit easier. So in the array that I'm going to create, it's going to be called phase and it has two dimensions. The first dimension uh, describes each row and uh, the column describes uh, the traffic signals. So uh, a typical row would have a phase offset, which is the time, the event time, for starting that particular um, uh, event, which might be the uh, new traffic signal to be displayed. Then I have a description for each of the traffic um, lights or each of the uh, traffic lights on the aspect uh, where I have a uh, parameter for green, yellow, and red. And all this 
has been inspired by the New South Wales government project, SCATS, which is quite old now. It started in the early 1970s, and by 1975, it was quite mature to use a central computer of a VAX computer and about um, 11 regional computers and um, microcomputers in each of the traffic signals. So SCATS is an adaptive system. That is, if there are changes to the um, traffic in Sydney, uh, then it will um, coordinate and adapt to those new changes. And it also synchronizes uh, traffic signals for uh, optimal traffic flow, not only across a whole city or a region, but um, a corridor. So if there's a special event and you want the uh, to give priority to a uh, particular corridor, you can do that with SCATS. And it's an example of traffic systems engineering. And it's part of a wider area of transport called intelligent transport systems. The software created by the New South Wales government is exported and is installed in 55,000 intersections throughout the world in 28 countries. So if you want to know more about SCATS and what the benefits are, for example, it saves time by um, making the, the uh, control of traffic signals much more efficient. It saves money because there's minimal delays and it also uh, reduces petrol consumption because you're not spending as much time at the traffic signals. And um, from a climate change perspective, it also reduces emissions. So here are my projects, and I'm going to add two more. But uh, the one I'm going to describe today is version eight. And in this um, project, I'm going to outline the objective, the hardware I'm using, uh, some of the features of the software. I'll give you a result, and um, we'll talk about some issues, and I'll give you some references. But stay on because I'll um, show you a short video on the operation of my uh, traffic signals. So the objective is quite um, straightforward. I've got three aspects, one for vehicles uh, facing north with uh, stop, ready to stop and go. Uh, in the opposite direction, we've got um, vehicles going east and we've got the pedestrian on the northern aspect. And for the pedestrian, we've only got the stop and the go one. But um, for the pedestrian, it only um, is activated if the pedestrian presses the button. And as a bonus, I want to debounce uh, the switch. And so what um, happens in real life is that when you press a button, it doesn't just um, instantaneously make a uh, connection it might uh, do that gradually and bounce before it settles down. So for, uh, in addition to those objectives, I want to um, minimize the use of um, code, which is wasteful on time. And the delay function is an example of that. So I'm going to use something other than the delay. I also want to uh, describe the phases and the phase timing in a, uh, an array, and I'm going to schedule each of the phases. I'm going to use a uh, Arduino timer for those phase changes. And I'm for the uh, push button, the pedestrian, when they press and activate a green, uh, I need to also implement that um, with software. But for the hardware, I'm going to put everything onto a uh, STEM Tetra which is a uh, Arduino Uno computer inside a breadboard. So you can see that on the, um, on the picture here. And in addition, I'm going to use the uh, Key E Studio traffic signal module, which incorporates the uh, resistor uh, and a set of um, traffic uh, lights, red, yellow, and green, uh, ready to be um, plugged in to my breadboard. I also need a mini switch for the pedestrian push button. 
and um, it's going to be connected uh, to the breadboard using a 10k resistor and I'm also going to use jumper wires on my breadboard. And now to the software. I won't go through all the code but highlight um, some of the features and one of those features is to use a timer uh, called the Arduino dash timer and um, the way you use that is to um, uh, first of all declare it so I'm going to um, bring it into my program as a from a, a, an existing library which is installed on my Arduino IDE. I'm going to create an object called uh, timer or t underscore timer and it's going to uh, schedule up to the maximum number of phases so each phase has its own timer event in the main loop i need to energize the timer and make sure that it's uh, ticking all the time and finally also in the main event i'm going to schedule uh, the events so uh, in the software i'm going to use not only the library timer but um, i'm going to use an array and it completely describes each uh, traffic signal and in fact the one i've got here describes the whole intersection so um, starting off uh, on the column the first column on the left is the event time and each row is a phase so uh, the uh, the next group is for the uh, signal set uh, facing north then the uh, signal set facing east then the pedestrian crossing and in each of those each column represents a um, a traffic signal color so here we've got green yellow and red and that repeats across each of the other uh, traffic um, signal posts i'm also going to use interrupts and what happens here is that um, the main program uh, when it's interrupted can process an event and uh, it can handle that event um, later on so um, the interrupt is a much more uh, much more efficient way to use your time instead of polling uh, what um, is happening with your switches. And um, so we've covered interrupts and events. After we've covered that with our um, and we've edited the program and created the program, we compile it within the Arduino IDE, we download it from there to our um, Arduino Uno computer using a uh, USB link. And finally, we test if it's working correctly. And I was quite happy with the results, everything worked. So uh, stay tuned to see a uh, demonstration of how it worked. So, what I've achieved here, I've used a timer instead of the delay function. The uh, delay uh, with millsex or sex wastes a, quite a lot of time. And it prevents you from um, doing more with the time that you've got available within a complete cycle. And um, I've used an interrupt instead of polling for the um, pedestrian push button uh, event. I've also used an array. It's a, a single point to describe the uh, complete traffic signal set, which in this case consists of three aspects the north for vehicle, east for the vehicle, and the uh, pedestrian traffic signal. And it gives a structure so you can see the whole pattern and um, easily visually check for any errors that might be occurring and conflicts that uh, might be there. And it's also possible to change some of those parameters. So it perhaps extend the time for a uh, particular um, green and make it more compliant with the SCATS traffic um, lights program.
And here are some of my references that uh, you might like to follow up. A couple of interesting videos on SCATS, on what it is and how it works. And uh, they're available on YouTube. And um, you can also download the library yourself on the Arduino timer and use it in your own projects. Okay, well, thank you for listening. This is my Arduino Uno traffic signal set. And it's using a uh, Stemterra breadboard on top. And inside the breadboard, there's a um, Arduino Uno compatible computer. And all the uh, pins of the Arduino Uno are um, labeled on top of the breadboard. So all mounted on the breadboard are traffic signals. So this one here is for the pedestrian and there's a pedestrian push button. And in addition to this northern facing pedestrian uh, lights, there's also um, the lights for the vehicle. And these are being scheduled at the moment in the north direction and also in the um, east direction. Now, uh, the way it operates is that um, when you press the push button at any time, it will schedule uh, that the uh, pedestrian light will go green at the same time that the traffic signal north also goes green. Now, what's interesting about this is, uh, first of all, in the hardware, we've got um, a combination of a uh, UNO computer and a breadboard in the Terra stem. But um, what's also interesting is the software. And um, there are no delays that are used here. It's using a library timer and it schedules uh, the uh, patterns for the traffic signals. And the push button uh, causes a software interrupt and it also um, schedules the uh, green light for pedestrians.